Happy Sunday, everybody. Hey, Rob Mazak here. I am a psychic medium, and of course, I talk about a lot of different things. Sometimes spiritual, metaphysical, alternative, just every ordinary, everyday ordinary things. However, today, I wanted to kind of focus on, I don't even know what you classified in, but I guess it's more spiritual, more um, divine. I guess it could be metaphysical. But I wanted to talk about dreams a little bit more. And I'm not talking about dreams where you're trying to accomplish something in your life. You know, a goal or something big that you're, no pun intended, dreaming about. Acquiring, achieving, doing, getting out of life. Which is, you know, a whole other topic. Which I do like to talk about that kind of stuff, of course. Dreams are really, really cool way of getting information from the other side. The other side could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. It could be a spiritual realm speaking out to you. It could be a spirit guide. It could be God. It could be whatever you consider that higher power or whatever it is outside of you. That doesn't necessarily come from within you. However, it could come from within you as well because there is a lot of different ideas that Everything you need is already within us. That we're encoded with everything that encompasses creation. So it's possible that it could come from within us as well. However, for this particular talk, we will assume that the other side is reaching out to us. And, and the reason that dreams are, are important and really dynamic and really cool, for lack of a better word, is because... During your sleep, you are a command audience. So you have two major parts of your mind. You got your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is only about 5 to 10% of the activity each day of your mind. Your subconscious is where all your experiences and your programming and your habits and, and memories and everything kind of runs around or repeats itself each day like it's a CD or a DVD or a movie or, or, or a song it only goes you know one direction and so in, it takes up a large very very large part of our activity of our mind and that is why most of the time our life continues to be the same at each day right because 95% of the thoughts you had yesterday are the same ones you're going to have today and we're all guilty of it and, and I'm not saying that I'm any better than anybody else. I'm just passing on information and ideas. You know, the subconscious mind can be reprogrammed through a variety of ways, which we might touch on towards the end. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the dream state because the conscious mind really thinks it's in charge, like that little barking chihuahua that's really small, really loud. And it is important because it, it is what helps program our subconscious mind and it is something that we can physically control you can you can concentrate on something and, and it's sort of like uh, I think I talked about in another video it's like breathing right and you don't have to think about breathing but if you want to breathe deeper or faster or slower on purpose you can so it doesn't it doesn't affect the automatic breathing pattern when you stop focusing on it same thing with your mind right but the, the, the thing with your conscious mind is it tends to get in the way of what you want to become or who you're supposed to become or, or what your dreams are, what your goals are, where you're going, all those things, right? And when you're sleeping, what's really cool is that it, it turns off and so it can't get in the way of the subconscious mind. And the subconscious or unconscious mind is the seat of everything it is like your hub your internet your internet box in your home that connects you to everything that's possible out there to have to know to see to, to experience connects you with the cosmic internet if you will and so every bit of possibility is connected there and so that is why hypnosis works really well because that's where you try to get somebody connected to while turning off their conscious mind and it is amazing the things that come through, information that comes through, the healing that happens. So at night when you sleep, 
it is um, a very, very awesome paradigm because conscious mind is turned off. It's not in the way. We call it, uh, in my hypnosis world, we call it Mr. Stupid or, you know, Mrs. Stupid, whatever you want to say. Because it doesn't, it thinks it knows and it kind of links up with the ego and it, and it tries to protect us from going the wrong way. Because our mind, let's think about it, I mean, our mind has the advantage over us because it knows where we want, we don't want to go or don't want to do or what's not, doesn't feel safe because of experiences. And so, you know, it, it, I'm not saying it's, it's the evil part of our mind, I'm saying it's the part that keeps us from stepping into the unknown and doing things that we probably want to do, should be doing, but are not out of fear based on experiences that have kind of been imprinted into our subconscious mind and run all the time, 24 hours a day. Because at night, when we go to sleep, our conscious mind turns off. That part of our mind, sort of like your CPU on your computer, the, the RAM or the, you know, the, 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 the active part of the computer, computing power of your computer turns off but the subconscious mind or the hard drive in this case continues to work as long as you have the computer on of course and it and it's it's uh if it's hooked up to the internet it's doing updates and, and doing all different kinds of things getting information you know helping you have a, a fuller experience on your computer same thing happens with your mind in a lot of ways right so at night your conscious mind does need to turn off it yeah, if you've gone without sleep for any length of time, you become a little delirious, right? And it's, it, it does need to turn off for a while so that the actual work can be done. The actual work of the subconscious connecting with all there is and, and uh, updating you, upgrading you, you know, helping you with different programs, whatever, right? Let's digress here for a second. So dreams at night are like being a command audience. Uh, you're probably familiar with that if you've ever been in the military. You're, you know, when you're going to a class, you don't have a choice to go to the class and you don't have a choice but to listen and engage. So you are a command audience. You have to be there and you have to listen. You have to pay attention. Same thing with the subconscious mind when you go to sleep and your conscious mind is turned off. What happens then is that you, it, it, everything you really need to know and everything you need to be, everything, everything, let's just say it, everything is there. Everything streams through and the messages and information you need to get come through your subconscious mind. And you experience those while you're sleeping and, and many times dreams feel like they're incredibly real just as if you are awake consciously and what's really cool about dreams is that they are very pure messages and sometimes it takes a, a, a hot minute to figure out what they mean you know right if they in my opinion they all mean something i don't see what the point of uh allowing it to connect with all there is without getting something valuable out of it in my opinion some of them seem silly some of them seem scary some of them are are very formative. They don't always come through with like direct messages, like somebody popping in, say an angel, or or a loved one that's passed pops in and gives you a very direct message. And that does happen. And it does happen occasionally, and and for some people all the time. For me, it doesn't as much, even though I do connect consciously to the other side and get that kind of information. I, what I find is during dreams that, and what, well, it's not just me. Everybody I talk to, all my clients, it, predominantly it seems like it's mostly like you're watching a, a movie or a video. And what you have to do then is figure out what the symbology in the dream means. Many, many people have studied dreams. Many, many high-level folks like Carl Jung and stuff like that. I want to say Jung, but that's not how you say it. It's Carl Jung. It is so important that it, it, it's laced through all religious texts and things like that because it is important. They are really direct messages from the other side or God or however you want to look at that. Once I, once I really learned to 
understand what the symbols mean in my dreams, I'm really be I, I really begin to understand what kind of message is coming through, or at least enough to to make sense of it and do a little bit more meditation on it or or research on it to figure out what the message is a little more exacting. And I've also figured out that once I learn what dream symbology means and my spirit guides or whoever it is that's, that's showing me these things, once we have a common language, common understanding, then in my awakening state or in my meditative state, when I'm doing it with my conscious mind, if you will, I, I then have what I would call conscious dreaming. And it kind of turns out the same. You know, the connection and the language and, and the understanding is really, really well worth learning. So in my dreams, I've gotten a lot of different things. That's where, that's where my, probably the, the best part of my journey started when I learned, started, uh, right before I learned to meditate. I mean, really got good at it or better at it and really buckled in and tried to do it. I was having a lot of dreams where my sister-in-law, who passed at a young age, would pop in, having conversations with her, and, and getting information, and hearing things, and knowing things from her that I shouldn't possibly know, that I was able to validate, eventually through um, my brother, and and, and so it, it was very, very um, interesting, informative, and and it just taught me so many things. And then eventually that, you know, that connection with her, this sister-in-law, started happening in my meditative state. And on and on and on you go. So I, I've really taken every, every dream that I can remember and researched it. And many times I already know what the symbology means. Sometimes I get thrown a, a loop. And I have to go and research, go on the internet, just like the cosmic internet, our internet, is so vast that there's almost n almost nothing that you can't find. Or at least, whether it's accurate or not, you can find lots and lots of information about just about anything. I mean, if you want to figure out how to take the, replace the window on a 1972 Pinto, you can probably find a YouTube video on it or something, right? It's all, it's all there. I mean, so it's, uh, it's well worth researching that. Now, if you're researching a, a particular symbol or idea from a dream, you're likely to find, you know, quite a few meanings. But what you have to do, at least what I did, is, is determine what really speaks to you about that symbol or that symbology or that idea. And then kind of capture that so that once you've accepted a, a particular meaning about something, your spirit guides are are understanding the same thing so you can have that common language like we talked about and every now and then though sometimes I get thrown a loop if you will where I don't entirely understand the message and I, I have one that I wanted to talk about which is which is interesting so normally if you find yourself in a structure house building Something like that. It usually represents the building or the structure usually represents some type of, well, some part of your consciousness. If you find yourself in the higher levels of the home or the building, it's usually your conscious part of your mind or, right, there you go. That was hard to say, right? And if you, if you find yourself in the lower parts of the home, it's usually your subconscious mind that they're speaking about. So last night... I had this dream about a very, very large tent, very large white tent, which is very similar to the tents that were at the last camp that I managed. Really, really large, you know, really thick white canvas that reflects the sun so that there's not super hot in there. You know, the air conditioners can work better. Anyway, what I found myself doing was taking those tents down or a tent down and I find that it, I found that it was very complex it didn't seem very easy at all to figure out how to take this thing down 
And in many cases, I found myself simply just cutting through the material in order to facilitate getting it down. Now, I don't remember the, I just remember the process of all the knots and the ropes and the, and the bolts and the, and the, the corners and the, and the, all those things. I don't remember the final product. I just remember going through the process and, and really feeling like I was damaging this tent in the process and that it probably wouldn't be able to be used again. So I decided to, of course, this morning, go ahead and start looking up some of the meanings. Uh, I, will, I will go through some of those so that maybe if you end up dreaming about a tent, you'll have the same information or same ideas. So normally when I research a meaning for a dream, I usually start to search by spiritual meaning of of a tent something about the spiritual part of that search gets you a little bit deeper into some of the ideas you can also search things like what does a tent in your dreams mean and there's a lot of really cool databases for dreams and dream interpretation out there that will really help you find out what this might mean to you here we go. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that I found in my search. So the spiritual meaning of a tent encompasses themes like divine protection, the presence of God, hospitality, and the journey towards spiritual growth. Now I've been on a path of spiritual growth for a very long time, but sometimes I do feel like I'm not going as fast or I'm not really growing anymore or as fast as I should be. It's almost like you get to a point of a lot of knowledge and you feel like, what, what, is, what is next? What is it that I'm supposed to be learning now? And sometimes it becomes a struggle because most of the things that I run across, you know, articles, videos, things like that that I'm trying to look at for something new, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of new stuff being talked about. However, we'll, we'll keep going here. So in Exodus in the Bible, of course, the tent represented the three heavens and the celestial and spiritual parts of the Lord's kingdom. So I'm not sure if that really resonates with me. The three heavens is kind of interesting because I distinctly remember in the Bible that they talk about the seven heavens. So I'm not really sure what the three heavens are. But, but also in the... A lot of the bi biblical text references that I found earlier, it also, rep the tent represents the individual, where you are the tent that, uh, the tent of God, if you will, and that taking care of your tent and, and worshiping in your tent like they did in the old olden days, you know, is important. And so, you know, in some ways, that could, you know, meet, taking down a tent and finding complications with that and all that, you know, maybe, maybe there's layers of, uh, of me that need to be taken down and that maybe I need to go a little more without instead of always going within. Hmm. I don't know. So tents also symbolize personal transformation, spiritual growth, and dreaming of tents could be a sign that you're undergoing a period of spiritual awakening. So I'm seeing the theme here, right? And so maybe maybe there's going to be some some really big new idea, different direction, different thought pattern, different modality that I'm going to learn. It could mean a lot of different things. Spiritual awakening is kind of a broad term. However, the word tent also in the Hebrew words uh, or book in the Bible means loss. I might have to spiritually look at what I've lost in my life, perhaps. I don't feel like I've lost a lot, but, you know, some of this I'm going to have to really get into. But it could also represent a fear of instability or a warning to reconsider what I'm currently doing, what my current path is. Now, I've been, I've been deployed with the military now for, it's going to be almost a year you know, doing border stuff. And although it does 
pay pretty decent and uh, it's steady pay and all that and it helps keep the family going. You wonder sometimes if that's really where you need to be. Now that I don't have much choice, but that's not the point. It could also represent or symbolically represent that themes of a temporary dwelling, spiritual journey, and divine protection. It could mean that, you know, that I've 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 kind of uh, gone within, but like I said before, maybe I need to go without, and it's like I'm I'm, I'm maybe hiding behind something. I don't know. It could also symbolize the need to let something go that no longer serves me. So that makes a lot of sense. It could be that. Whatever it is that I need to let go of is no longer providing me with the safety and comfort that I thought it was or that I believe it's doing. It could also, you know, it could mean an unhealthy relationship, job, habit, things like that, that are keeping me from achieving the goals that I want or should be doing. I think that's what this is really talking about here. As far as transformation, taking down a tent can also signify transformation and growth. The destruction of this tent could represent ending old ways of thinking and or living and the beginning of something new. We see a lot of themes going on here, right? It could be a sign that I'm ready to move on from old situation and embrace change, step out into the unknown. You know, stepping out into the unknown is very scary you know in the end we're all going to leave this place anyway so i'm not sure why we all worry about taking chances i guess it would be different if you didn't have a family right but even then you know we can't just do the same thing over and over expecting something some different result right so i think that the the, the two ideas though that really stand out to me i highlighted these in red in my document is that I'll just read these. It says, perhaps you have been feeling trapped or stagnant in your current circumstances and your subconscious is urging you to embrace change and seek new experiences. There we go, right? Maybe it's time for something new. Maybe it's something or a time for something that's absolutely different than I've ever done. And, you know, there are a lot of things out there that I could do. I just haven't stepped out and take those chances, right? And then the appearance of a tent in your dream serves as a reminder to embrace the unknown and embark on an exciting journey of self-discovery. All in all, I think when after reading through all this, I think it's it's really about learning to trust the the process. Even though I'm really good at trusting, I'm human and I still there's times when I hold back when I and I really should just be doing things that I know I should be doing or and or not doing things that I know I shouldn't be doing. Anyway, I wanted to kind of touch on that. I thought that was kind of a cool thing and just my thoughts and ideas on the research that I found. I hope that you guys will embrace the same idea to really look at the information you're getting. And it happens in dreams a lot. Some people don't remember any of their dreams. But if you do, it's really it's really helpful to write it down or write somewhere a little you know, text or blurb that will help you remember the dream later. Many times at night, I will have this really vivid dream. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I'm going to remember this tomorrow, so I'm just going to go back to sleep. Well, that hardly ever works. So what I've learned to do is roll over and text myself a, a short phrase or a few words that will help me remember in the morning what it is I had dreamt about, or at least the prevalent part, so that I can begin doing things like this. And, and I think there's a lot here about tense that's just a lot, lot more meaning and a lot more ideas than I ever thought a tent would mean. Outside of the research that I just did, I might have just considered this, you know, a structure and reviewed it or accepted it, the information that way and, and, and dug into it. But 
I'm telling you, we are alive at a very interesting time, exciting time. You can find information on so many things. Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing it for the betterment of ourselves? Back to remembering your dreams. So there's a variety of ways to remember them. Some people uh, keep a, a little notebook and a, and a pen next to them, next to the bed on the nightstand or something to help remember your dreams. If you wake up from a dream and you're having a hard time going back to sleep, you know, hey, you know, take the time to write it out or write it down or type it out, you know, on your phone or something because the information that comes through is incredibly cool, interesting, magnificent, pure, all of those things. So I challenge you guys to not only accept what you get in your dreams and begin to analyze them and do something with it, but also learn to meditate. There's many, many ways to meditate. We won't spend a lot of time here talking about that, but learning to meditate, quieting your mind so that you can Turn off some of those extraneous thoughts that we have every day, like 60,000 plus a day that are crowding our mind that are the same as they were most every day, like we talked about at the beginning, so that you can channel information directly from the other side and get this kind of information just like you do in your dreams. Because when once I learned to meditate and really connect, it is definitely like conscious dreaming. I can get the same type of information, the same type of experiences, the same type of, you know, symbology, the same type of sometimes direct messages and, and see things that I could never see in my physical world because it's simply impossible to travel, say, off the planet or have the money to go to do or go look at some of these places and experience them. So, you know, you can live extraordinary through meditation. And so why not, right? Go places in your own consciousness that you probably will never, ever have the opportunity to do in your, your current life due to limitations of money or time or whatever, right? I would love to hear some of y'all's dreams and your thoughts on dreams. So, you know, reach out to me when you get a chance on my contact page on my website at lifebymazak.com, L-I-F-E-B-Y-M-A-Z-A-K.com. I would love to hear from you, and you will definitely hear from me again. Stay strong live your life.